Next question is from Junior G Fit. With schools getting ready to go back, how do each of you feel about sending your kids back to school? Will you or won't you? Also, how do you handle this situation if you and your spouse have very different feelings and opinions about it? Wow, imagine being Man. married imagine being married to somebody who like totally has a different view on. I didn't even think about that. Like yeah, I have yeah. different views than my some friends, which that's it presents its own challenges. You know, like we were all mm -hmm. sitting around like we have very different this was this weekend we're all together and 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 one of the three friends is like super hardcore left mm -hmm. and you know it presents itself with challenges with conversations now we all tease each other and have now fun now you guys are adults about it right right yeah. and have fun about it but i mean if i lived in the same house as him all the time and like every issue was like that that would be really challenging to to do that i can't do you guys have any friends that are have have spouses that are completely like polar opposite views on things like that yeah sometimes i think mm. it's that's going to happen um with something at some point you're not going to have the same view as your spouse that's why you have to learn how to compromise that's right. like the big thing about uh, being married actually is learning how to do that because you're going to feel very strongly about something. She's going to feel very strongly. Mm -hmm. As far as the school thing is concerned, like these are the latest statistics or the latest numbers. Okay. Here we are in California, right? California has got uh, the second highest amount of of confirmed coronavirus cases right now in the country. Is that to Florida and, and they're growing. No, Florida's not number one, but they're growing very rapidly. New York was number one, but California is probably going to catch up here pretty soon. We still, as of the recording of this podcast, not one child has died mm. uh, from COVID. The statistically speaking, the the death rate from COVID for kids is so small it's hard to cal calculate. You're speaking as as California. Just I'm talking about the whole the whole world. It's so we it's, haven't had a single kid die. No, in California we have. That's why I just asked. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I, mean, I thought you meant the statistic. Okay, yeah. No, kids have died from it, but it's such a small percentage. Um, the flu for kids is much riskier um, than than COVID is. Not saying that there aren't kids that are going to suffer from it. You know, if somebody's listening and they know somebody, that really really sucks. But the risk is uh, is super low. So, but now that now what they say is it's not about the kids. It's about the kids getting it and then bringing it home to grandma. In which case I say, yeah, you should definitely be careful around people who are high risk. The other part that I, I think we need to look at is we're not considering all the other health effects yeah. of some of these policies. Um, okay, fine. You're worried about coronavirus, so no kids go to school. These are developmental years. They're not being around friends. They're not yeah. leaving the house. Formative years. They're 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 locked in the house. Like, that's not healthy for a kid, no. I, I feel, and considering the low death rate of, of coronavirus, uh, and I, I think you're you're it's more risky to force your kids to stay at home than it is to send them to school. That's my personal opinion. I'm not an infectious disease expert, but right. uh, that's my my well, own personal opinion. Here in California, I mean, it just came out, right? So California is no no go this year at all. No, well, not so. this year, uh, the fall. Or the whatever. fall, yeah, the, the well, start that's this, this year. year. Yeah, basically start this the year. first yeah, yeah. few months. They don't is yeah. what we got so far, which yeah. who knows? I'm sure they'll they'll lock it down the rest of the you know after that. But yeah, I, I, I'm kind of with you, Sal. I'm just like I'm really sad for the kids that they have to now take on all these fears and everybody else's like hysteria, uh, you know, during their most formative years of where they're supposed to be, you, you know, just focusing on what they need to focus on, which is getting educated, you know, having community, hanging out with their friends. Uh, and so it's frustrating for me uh, being like I, I wasn't considering staying at home and like doing, uh, you know, at home uh, education. But now it definitely is something that makes sense. And so you mean like pulling them out of the school? pulling them out of school. Like what what is the point of, of putting them in a situation where everybody is? is so uh, hysterical about the way that they're handling uh, objects. They're rubbing everything down with sanitizer. And, uh, you know, we didn't get any of this from the flu. Like, this mm -hmm. is just some, if you were sick, you stayed home. And then, and, and that was it. And, and so, you know, I just, I don't understand this. This isn't, to me, this does, doesn't resonate with the way that I think about our body's immune system and being able to then, you know, overcome like these, potential diseases that come our way so it has honestly like i i can't understand it obviously this is you know their reaction to trying to slow you know something that's spreading but for me uh 
it, to me, I, I think it makes more sense to keep them home, like keep it in a safe environment, bring people in that can educate them to help. Uh, so we're looking at those options right now. Well, not to mention that Sal talks about the unintended consequences. What about the, you know, play is a big part of school too. Mm -hmm. How many, and you guys now, you guys are fitness people with parents. So you guys are probably trying to insert, you know, activities and things to keep your kids active. But if how many people in America are doing that right now? How many people are making sure that if your kid was playing at recess for 45 minutes to an hour every single day, plus whatever breaks they have and what it looks like for them and sports that they might have been playing, right. now they're not doing any of that anymore. Are you making sure as a parent to do that? And what role does that play in it's, their health? It's more totally. than that. It's more than that. It's not just the activity. It's the activity with other kids. Right, right. Interaction. That, yeah, that's a huge... That is a huge part of no, the child you, development. That's a good point because yeah. that was something that remember we were talking. I don't know if we shared this on air or not, but you know we were having this discussion, you know, about raising our kids in this time with tech, right? And I was, you know, Sal and Justin were talking about how challenging like it is to you know feel like you're constantly telling your kid no, you can't have that, and you don't want to be a tyrant about it. And I was like, come on, dude, are you really? Is it really that big of a deal? Like I remember playing video games with my friends all day long some days. And, you know, they're on vacation with us. Why don't you let that? And he goes, listen, if I, and this was Sal's response to me, is that if my son was playing with two or three of his friends, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But they're on, it's not, he's by himself mm -hmm. staring at a screen all day long. Yeah. He's not truly interacting socially with his friends and they're all playing together. He's just staring at a TV screen with some headphones on. And I was it's like, it's not oh, okay. a real interaction that, that fulfills, you know, that sort of need that they have to, to connect with another human being, you yeah. know, like these virtual things are not fulfilling that need we all have as human beings. And so we have to just kind of like fend for ourselves. That's where I feel like we're at right now because, you know, the government is not going to provide that for us. No, That's fine. No, the medical community, the, the, the child health experts are saying, open the schools up. They're saying the risk of, of, of death yeah. with kids or serious complications from coronavirus for children is super, super low. The dangers of them not going to school are higher because, again, these are crucial developmental years. Look, above all else, humans are extremely social. This is what makes – one of the things that makes humans unique is we're extremely social animals. We have very complex societies. It is, it's actually deemed torture to isolate somebody. If, if you capture them in war, it's, a, it's against the Geneva Convention. Here's what we're doing with kids. Don't go to school. Stay at home all day long. Holy shit. Okay, yeah. You, okay, maybe we, we lower the risk of, of, of spreading a disease a little bit. But what are the the other sides of that consequence? Well, here let me let me, uh, or let, the me consequence, let me throw the let me throw the other side to this right. So this was a discussion this weekend, and I told you my friends on the the other side far left. He's also a principal to a high school. So he goes, the fear is not the kids. The teachers. Exactly. He says the fear is that the, the schools, first of all, are not structured in a way to like manage this. He goes, not manageable. He goes, the amount of kids that are coming in and out of these, these, these classrooms, the things they're touching and grabbing and, and sharing amongst each other is, he goes, the, just managing, keeping all that stuff clean and not them spreading it to the teachers. Mm -hmm. And then also even having to manage the teachers. He goes, you know, I already see what I'm going to have to do. And he goes, it's gonna, I'm going to have yeah. to be the asshole who comes in the teacher break room and the four teachers are sitting around having coffee together and I'm going to have to go, what the fuck are you guys doing? Yeah, they're never going to be able to manage it. And so he's like- Any of these diseases. He's like, it's not about a, the kids dying from this. It's that them being carriers to the then teachers who then the teachers go off and carry it to other people. Mm -hmm. He goes, that is the greatest challenge that I'm going to have yeah, to deal with. He I goes, know my whole job is going to change from being an educator to being this guy who is constantly monitoring health safety. Well, okay. it's ripe for disruption. Yeah, it is. And look, I, well, that's what I think too. I, yeah. I heard that, but look, in places where schools have been reopened, there is no evidence that it so spreads that, the virus so that's, more. So that's not true. He mm. so he told me that they're they're tracing back. Oh God, I wish what country it was. And they're saying that the main reason why their their outbreak, they're tracing it back, was because they opened up schools again. I wish I remember what country it was, so I could so I could well, quote I know, it better. I know. I think it was Sweden. It's did not. not do, it's not Sweden. Well, Sweden it, it did wouldn't, wasn't fully open, and you compare it to other countries, and it's kind of the same. Maybe Doug can Google. I don't know how you're looking for country opened up blames. You okay, know, but school, here, school he, here's here's my argument. Okay, my argument is not that it's not going to spread more coronavirus. My argument is. What are the unintended consequences, and are those going to be worse? Well, you know me. I know yeah. you know I agree with you, but I'm playing. I'm what I'm doing right now is there's there's about forty five percent people right yeah. now that are listening to this conversation that are going, <laughs> and I'm I'm going to play that. Yeah. 
Well, for you, yeah, okay? no, that's good. This is what this is because this is my 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 best friend who is a vice or, or a principal of a school. He's on that side of it where he's like, it's gonna be it's gonna be a nightmare if we open schools up. You're gonna see well, this thing live go, under a rock, you know, the rest of your life, or deal with the fact that you're there's people that have gotten sick and gotten better. No, did we forget about that? Yeah, we really forgot about that. Yep. Now we need everybody's protection for every step of every fucking thing that we do from here on out. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. I'm Just, done. Justin just gave me an erection. I love it when you get angry. No, I, 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 I agree. I think, um, I think this, these measures are being uh, managed or should I say led by one class of expert, which is the infectious disease expert, and that's, they should definitely be in that conversation. But they are not including psychologists uh, in that. They're not including economists in that. They're not including, um, you know, they're not including everybody. Let's look at the whole picture. No, I love that. That's a great. That's a great, great point right there. Because that's what ends up happening is that this turns into just a what's a healthier thing, and there, there's no debate there. Would yeah, it be? Will there be more it, infections? Because here's the thing. Yeah. I will agree to this. It would the, for health reasons. The safest thing we could all do is go lock ourselves in our rooms for the next fucking two years, from an, just from the infection yeah, standpoint. Right. Yeah. And no one can argue that. Now, but that's we'll, a that is a fact. These, right. but let's think about how. And, that, and I like about to, your health. Being I like to take that, that extreme to get people. That this, that's how I used to teach fitness, right? With those yes. extreme analogies, I tell people like that came in. They say, "Hey, Adam, I want to lose thirty pounds as fast as I can." I say, "Okay, if you want to lose thirty pounds as fast as you can, stop eating. Come in here every day and see me. We're going to run on the treadmill for an hour." Mm -hmm. Now you laugh and you think that's ridiculous. But that's the extreme to get them to understand this is not the way. This is not the best way for us to do it. There's other factors we have to think about. Mm -hmm. The same thing goes for this argument is, yeah, no shit. Wearing masks all the time, shutting schools down, all of us isolating would be the safest thing for this country. Mm -hmm. No shit. But we're not thinking about all the other things. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're not talking about the suicide rates going through the roof, depression going through the roof, domestic violence going through the roof. What's going on with our kids that are not going to be socialized for an entire year? There are other factors that you have to take into consideration that we're just not. They're not. And look, okay, I'll give you another example. Okay, we're in the fitness space, so I'll go with this one. So every year, at least 2.8 to 3 million people die every year from obesity. Okay, that's a fact. Every single year. Now, from an obesity standpoint, would we save lives if we all of a sudden restricted everybody's food, everybody was on rations, and we eliminated all unhealthy foods, and everybody was required by law to exercise? If you don't exercise, you get fined or thrown to jail. Will we reduce the deaths of obesity? Yes, we will. Dramatically. Is that, is that going to be a good thing for our health? No, it won't. Health is a sphere. It's not just how many infections we get. It's also the psychology, your psycho psychological state has to do with your health. Your family uh, has to do with your health. The relationships you have, how you learn to socialize with people, how you communicate with people, your develop, how you develop, your, how you handle money is a part of your yeah. health. And they're not considering any of that. All they're looking at is the scary shit, which is the infections, and they're not considering anything else. And I, my point is this. You, take ki you t tell kids they can't go to school Will you lower infection rate? Probably. Will you cause other consequences that may be worse than that? Also, probably. I I I think so, and nobody's considering that. So that's just you know, and that's from a a, a personal trainer, fitness podcast host standpoint. So take it, <laughs> uh, take it for what it's worth.